In the previous episode, we saw how Island was panicking because of the locusts, and Dong Shik and his team were struggling to even kill a normal monster on floor 38 because they were extremely poisonous, and there was no poisonous antidote available in the tower. Just then, the tarantula monster was about to attack Dong Shik when the big melon girl saved him but got injured instead. She was about to die when Theo arrived. After listening to the whole story, he panicked, thinking about what would happen to his Instagram pics if she died. So, he got an idea and took the new detoxifying green onion and fed it to her. And instantly, she got all better. Dongshik then asked Theo how many detoxifying green onions he had, and Theo happily replied that he had 100. This made Dongshik extremely happy, and he was about to say he would buy all of them, but a rude voice from behind stopped him, startling both Theo and Dong Shik. It was a guy with a mother-father-looking face from the Royal Knight and Wizard Guild, one of the wealthiest guilds. He questioned Dong Shik about how he could trade secretly with the wandering merchant, claiming it was against business ethics. And guys, before we proceed, today's like goal is 4,000 likes. Please like, subscribe, and write Next Incher in the comments so that I can continue this series. Now, let's continue. Dong Shik, still in shock, wondered how they knew he and Theo were having a secret meeting. Were they spying on him? On the other hand, the royal knight was furious and questioned Theo whether wandering merchants do this type of favoritism. He threatened Theo that if he does favoritism, he will complain about him, and then Theo will lose all his customers. Meanwhile, Dong Shik, hearing all this, started to get annoyed, as cherry tomatoes and green onions are items that can only be purchased from Seo Jun and Theo. Whatever people do, it will not affect Theo's sales at this point. They were just trying to pressure Theo. So now the question was, how was Theo going to handle this situation? Theo, on the other hand, was in deep thinking. A lot of people were watching him, and he didn't want to ruin his reputation. So Theo decided to keep an auction, like always, to sell his items. Theo asked if anyone had any objections, and with everyone's agreement, the auction started. Theo slowly put his hand on his bag and with a smile, took out something special. He took out a basket full of cherry tomatoes, and this mother with no father was looking at the cherry tomatoes with lustful eyes. You! Then Theo announced that today he would be selling C-grade magic tomatoes in batches of 500, first with a total of 6,000. Now, hearing the word C-grade, everyone got bewildered and shocked. They couldn't believe Theo now had C-grade item. They started to gossip before the shock about the green onion even settled. The news of C-grade tomatoes shook everyone. They couldn't believe that it hadn't even been a month since D-grade items started to come, so how could C-grade items have come this fast? Then, one by one, everyone, like mad, started to bid high tower coins, from 350 to 400, and even as high as 700 in an instant. Seeing all this, Dong Shik panicked. He tried to stop his guild members from buying any cherry tomatoes as their main goal was the detoxifying onion leaves, but it was too late. His guild member had already purchased a good amount of cherry items and was holding them as if they were their girlfriend, which they and you all don't have. Dong Shik was just standing there, annoyed. After that, it was time for the detoxifying onion leaves. Theo once again put his hand on his magic pouch, announcing he had a total of 100 detoxifying onions, and he would be selling them in batches of 10. At this moment, Dong Shik's team member realized how badly they had messed up. As soon as the auction started, Dong Shik aggressively bid 130 tower coins, but the other party had saved their tower coins and started to hike the price, making Dong Shik extremely angry. The auction continued, but one by one, even before Dong Shik could bid anything, the royal knight guy with insanely high bids started to buy every batch, not letting Dong Shik even speak. Like that, the auction finished with the big melon girl taking cute pictures of Theo selling detoxifying onion leaves, and Dong Shik was too depressed. He fell to the ground as he only managed to secure 10 green onions. If that was not enough, the mother from a different father with an ugly smile started laughing at Dong Shik, taunting him as he bought all the green onion. 
They continued to taunt Dong Shik for not managing to command his team, which let them buy all the green onion. With a wicked smile, the Royal Knight and Wizard Guild left, saying the Phoenix Guild could stick on this floor and they would climb up first. Now, Dong Shik's teammates realized how dumb and useless they were and started to apologize to their captain, saying they got blinded by the cherry tomato. Dong Shik, being a kind-hearted guy, forgave his dumb teammates, saying it's fine as the world doesn't end here if their guild lags a bit behind. But just then, the big melon girl called Dong Shik, saying Theo had come and he had something to say to him, making Dong Shik confused. After that, we see Dong Shik and Theo sitting alone, and once again, their secret meeting began. There, Dong Shik explained everything that happened outside the tower, how he helped Seo Jun's family move to a safe place named Han Dong, where his guild was protecting Seo Jun's family. After listening to all the details, Theo started to write everything down on a paper so that he could relay every detail to Seo Jun without any mistake. Dong Shik continued to explain, that since the Korean Association is taking turns to guard Seo Jun's family tightly, Seo Jun doesn't have to worry at all and can focus on his mission because Seo Jun is a very talented and genius hunter from South Korea. After writing all the details, Theo, while taking something out from his pouch, first thanked Dong Shik from Seo Jun's perspective, saying Seo Jun said he wanted to reward Dong Shik for doing so much for his family. Dong Shik, hearing this, got a bit shy and tried to say he was just doing his duty, but before he could finish his sentence, Theo took out a big basket full of C-grade cherry tomatoes and detoxifying green onions. Theo explained that inside the basket there were 200 cherry tomatoes and 50 green onions. This left Dong Shik speechless. He just stood in his spot with his mouth open, shocked, not knowing what to do and how to express his happiness, as 50 green onions were more than enough for his team to climb the next floor. Then Theo continued, saying Seo Jun also said that Dong Shik can ask for anything from Seo Jun in the future if he needs anything, and he will be selling all the good stuff at a cheap price. This was a reward from Seo Jun's side for protecting Seo Jun's family, but Dong Shik had to keep this a secret from everyone. Dong Shik, after hearing all this with a big smile, agreed, saying he would keep this between him and Seo Jun, and he would try his best not to repeat the situation that happened early. Well, the matter with Seo Jun's family is also a top secret anyway, so this was a win-win situation for Dong Shik, but it was not the end. Then Theo, with a confident smile, first laughed, confusing Dong Shik, then with a mischievous smile, he announced to Dong Shik that he had a secret item that he could exclusively sell to Dong Shik, but only for today, making Dong Shik curious and more confused. Meanwhile, at Seo Jun's place, the Minotaurs were building a modern house. Some were doing the roofs, some were holding huge bricks, and some were chopping wood, while the Grey Rabbit was giving everyone instruction. Seo Jun was just standing there, amazed with his mouth open. He couldn't believe how fast the work was progressing without any modern equipment. It had only been a few days, but the exterior part was almost complete. The Grey Rabbit, with a polite smile, replied that it was all thanks to the Minotaur's hard work that the pace was this fast. He continued explaining that the details about the interior must be done by the three siblings, so the interior would take some time. With that, Seo Jun, along with the Grey and Warrior Rabbits, went inside the house to discuss the design of the interior. But the Baby Bear, on the other hand, was watching them from behind and also wanted to go inside the house with his daddy. Seo Jun was inside the house giving instructions about where the bed and other stuff would be when he heard a rumbling sound. He immediately ran toward that direction, finding it was none other than the baby bear trying to get inside the house. Seo Jun got scared and panicked and shouted at the baby bear to stop as the whole house was shaking and it could crumble if this continued. Seo Jun politely explained to the baby bear that he couldn't come inside the house. This made the baby bear a little sad, and he questioned why he couldn't come inside. Seeing this situation might get out of hand, 
Seo Jun, with a more polite tone, first tried to calm the baby bear, explaining that he is too big for the house and the door is too small, so if he tried to enter, the whole house would collapse. Does you want to destroy his dad's house? He asked. The baby bear realized everyone's concerns and replied that as a good boy, he didn't want to destroy his dear dad's house. He just wanted to spend some time with his dad. Seo Jun then, while cuddling the baby bear, started to walk him away from the house, saying, Why don't he lick the queen bee's special juice in the corner that he liked very much, as his dad have work to do inside the house? Once all this work is finished, he promised to play with the baby bear. But for now, the baby bear have to sit calmly like a good boy. Well, the queen bee was not happy about this, as once again the baby bear would suck her dry. But what could she do? After that, we see the baby bear sitting calmly with the baby queen bee sitting on his head. He was holding the bee's special juice in his hand and watching C.O. June work. While watching and sipping the bee's juice, he began to feel sad again. He just wanted to spend time with his dad. Slowly, he started to get emotional. The baby queen bee noticed this and started to pat the bear's head to calm him down, but this only made things worse and he started to cry, saying, If only I was small like the rabbits, I could also follow Seo Jun. The baby queen bee also panicked, not knowing what to do. She tried to calm the poor baby down, but it was no use. Suddenly, the tears of the baby bear fell on his hands and they started to glow, confusing both him and the baby queen bee. Meanwhile, the minotaurs were having their lunch, and Seo Jun was discussing with the gray rabbit what would be a good ingredient for the bed. Initially, they thought of using green onions, but the gray rabbit said that if they used green onions, the bed would be too hard. But just then, a scream calling, Seo Jun, Dad, with excitement, startled Seo Jun. He turned back, but even before he could do anything, a mini-sized Kyung dashed into Seo Jun, which Seo Jun thought would kill him from the pain. The impact sent Seo Jun flying back, and he fell onto the pile of green onions. This shocked everyone. After Seo Jun caught his breath, he was still dizzy from the impact, but before he could recover from it, someone started to lick him on his face. Voila! In front of Seo Jun, there was a mini version of Kyung, all excited that he was small and would be able to spend all his time with his dad. Well, on his chest, there were three honeycomb-like structures. Seeing this, even Seo Jun was confused and surprised, wondering what was happening. 